Speaking for myself, there's no more beautiful and mechanically satisfying film camera system than the 500 series from Hasselblad. Gorgeous design, bulletproof construction, and an iconic silhouette that has an incredibly rich history. As a former 503 CW owner and a current digital Hasselblad user, I was happy to see that Hong Kong based NONS camera announced a new back for 500 series cameras that lets you use square format Instax film. Now before the film purists get their pitchforks out and start commenting, it's worth noting that instant film has been used by professionals using 500 cameras since they first hit the market decades ago. It's a great way to check the shot instantly and in an era when getting your film developed could take days or weeks, you'd have kind of a contact print that you could check immediately. I wrote to Non's camera to request a back for me to give my impartial thoughts on and they obliged a couple of months later. I then had to visit my buddy Boris at Panda Camera here in Hong Kong to loan a 500cm body and a couple of lenses as I foolishly or regrettably sold off my 503 CW during the pandemic as it wasn't getting used. Unpacking the NONS back, you'll find the back itself, a USB-C charging cable, and a QR code to a 30 second video that shows you how to set it up. It really is that simple. Attach it to the camera, insert a pack of square Instax film, it only fits one direction, remove the dark slide, fire a shot and then hit the one button it has on the top left hand corner and that outputs the single piece of instant film. It's really simple and hard to go wrong. So let's take it on location for an afternoon of shooting with model Kiki at Repulse Bay Beach. It's worth noting this isn't the first Instax back for 500 cameras. I saw one just a couple of years ago go live, but that was using the mini film, whereas this square format film is actually slightly larger than the original film that these cameras even used. You'll note the small black border inside the photo. That's showing you how much bigger the Instax film is than a piece of film. Kiki was right on time. She quickly selected a couple of swimsuits from the ones that I had brought along for us to shoot with. We had a couple of hours together. As the Instax film is ISO 800, most of the images were around f4 to 5.6 in really shady areas and f11 to f16 in direct sun. And as I kept forgetting to check my depth of field preview, I was initially surprised to find a few times the number of tourists that were appearing in the back of my shot because they weren't there when I was framing up at, you know, f2.8. One technique you can use to combat this is use the Instax's limited dynamic range to your benefit. Instant film tends to hold shadow detail much better than highlights. The highlights are easy to blow out and they don't retain a whole lot of detail. So by backlighting Kiki, exposing for her face and overexposing the background, we get a clean shot of her and it can blow out the background, including all of the other tourists on the beach. Don't forget to check out the sample files, folks. The link is in the description below. And whilst you're over at learn.macranger.com, you can check out my brand new photographer's guide to Iceland. Welcome. 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 Welcome to Iceland. Steph and I show you around all of my favorite photography destinations, showing you the best time of day to visit, what equipment you're going to need, the different options you have at different seasons through the year. The course includes five hours of 4K content, as well as a comprehensive guidebook available as a PDF or ebook that you can take along to prepare your perfect travel photography adventure. Check it out, details are in the description below. We 
we headed up towards the shops to get a last shot or two in this swimsuit and met a couple of hyperactive kids that were really sweet and dying to have their photo taken. Kiki changed into this retro one-piece swimsuit that I'd brought along and we switched to the black and white film. We both felt that the color was a little bit over the top, but in black and white, it should come up nicely. We started out in this little seating area and went for three different looks in basically the same position. And surprisingly, we both agreed which of the three shots we preferred. Let me know as a comment, which of these do you prefer? As we headed back down towards the beach, I found this interesting frame that I thought would look great as a black and white, and including her big black boots. Now, whilst it may be a kind of anti-glamour swimsuit shot, I really like the final result. Overall, I have to say the system is really easy to use if you're already familiar with your 500 series camera. If the whole system was new to you, then it's just one extra thing that you have to figure out. The only main flaw that I could find is that the dark slide is so thin that it bent on my very first day of shooting. The slot it goes into is incredibly small and overall it's a much tighter fit than the original Hasselblad Bax dark slide. I found it really fiddly to get in and out, and this is really an issue because they note that the slide isn't 100% light proof even when it's properly inserted and hasn't been bent. They say that once you take the back off, if you still have film in, you actually need to put it into a light proof bag to make sure that there aren't light leaks due to the dark slide not being 100% light proof. Okay, so we got through 20, 21 shots in the end. Thank you so much. It was Thank really you. fun to shoot with you. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. very formal. I'll give you my business card okay, after. Yeah. You can check out Kiki's uh, social media below as well as the files. You can check them out. Um, how was it for you? This is your first time shooting for film, right? Yeah, um, I think it's really um, a surprise and the waiting time maybe so long but it's mm. i think it's worth to wait mm, yeah. the anticipation yeah. yes great okay let's head back in studio and we'll talk through my final thoughts on this guy okay folks that was a really fun shoot with kiki thanks to boris at panda camera for loaning me the camera and for nons for sending me out the back as i said this is non-sponsored nobody's paying me anything for this. I bought the film, they sent me the back for free. These are my full and honest thoughts. I was honestly a bit concerned, how's the build quality? How's it going to be? Is it all finicky and you know, just a bit of a pain to shoot with? But it really isn't. I genuinely enjoyed shooting with it. Other than the dark slide, which actually now has two bends in it, I think the build quality and the usability is all great and definitely an option if you have one of these cameras. Now, you've probably already commented if you're one of those purists and think that this is sacrilege when I shared it on social media. I already had people who I saw on their account a medium format film shooters saying that this is heresy and you shouldn't be using instant film. As I said, instant film has been used with these cameras through the 50s, 60s, 70s when these were, were the fashion camera for instant feedback on your shot. So that's nothing new. And in my opinion, if you're out there shooting medium format film all the time and that's your bag, then great, fine, fair enough. But if, like me, it spent most of the year in the camera, in the closet, gathering dust, not being used, then what's the more pure or the more, you know, the real photographer, the one who leaves it gathering dust or the one who throws a different kind of technology back on there and actually makes use of their fantastic equipment. I think it makes sense. Models love these, so to be able to throw this back on in the middle of a shoot and give them a keepsake they can take at the end of the day, or strangers if you're shooting on the street, it's a really nice thing. Overall, I would have no real hesitation on recommending this if you already have the camera. The back itself is, you know, I think around $300 by itself, but getting a good quality body and lens is more likely to cost you like a thousand. So I wouldn't buy a system just to shoot this kind of film, but if you have the system, I reckon it's pretty fun. Why not give it a try? Let me know any questions that you guys have. Thanks again to Boris, Nons, and Kiki. All the links are below.